Hello everyone, this is Vibhul Buroit and I will now start with the topic of Comparative Chemistry of Transition Metals. Okay, the title is already there on the board. Once again I repeat, the title is Comparative Chemistry of Transition Metals. So my dear friends, as usual we start with the basics. Because if the basics are very strong, the advanced level becomes very easy. Alright, so the basic of inorganic chemistry, everybody will understand and that is periodic table. What is periodic table is? It is a systematic classification of elements. Now when I use the word systematic, so that means there has to be some parameter in our mind on with reference to which the classification is being done. And that parameter my dear friend is the last electron entering into which particular orbital. There are four orbitals under consideration. The S orbital, the P orbital, the D orbital and the F orbital. So the last electron entering into that particular orbital, that block it is called as. So if the last electron is S orbital, it is called S block. Bola chata hai. Similarly, we can talk about P block, D block as well as F block. Okay? I guess this parameter is very clear. Next, what is the skeleton of a periodic table? How the elements are arranged, the positions how they are. So for understanding that, let us try to be, go very simple part and that is S and the P are metallic and non-metallic respective. Here I would like to say all P block elements are not non-metallic. Okay, it's a mixture. Some of them are non-metal, some of them are metals and few of them are metalloids showing a metallic as well as non-metallic character, both. But then generally we consider P block as non-metals, S block as metals, so they are both of them are opposites. Okay, so just consider, okay, I'm just giving you a trick how to remember the positions of the various block of elements in the periodic table. So just try to consider that trick and that is, imagine that S and P are both of them are enemies. And if both the enemies are together, dono baju baju mein to kya hoga, pyar vapat to hoga hi nahi, mara mari hoga, there will be a fight unstability and periodic table is stable because it is existing since many years 150 years we completed a periodic table you must be knowing this then for stability what has to be done is these two enemies has to be kept aside do mara mari kar rahe to teesra ek aana chahiye usko alag karne ke liye ab mere jaisa jayega to main bhi maar khayega to koi ek jada tagda aadmi aana chahiye jo wo dono dushmano ko jo dono mara mari karne wale unko dur kar de aur wo kaun hai d block okay aisa hi yaad rakhiyega Okay, so it becomes very easy for you. So no confusion at all. So S is on one side, the P is on the other side, or beach mekon aiga D. So S and P are away from each other. Alright, so the arrangement will be like this. So S on one side, the P on the other side, and in between comes what? D. The next thing is in a classroom also, there are some character students. Okay, I hope you understand what, is, what I mean is, especially sitting on the last benches, alright, they are a part of that last room, but their characters are different, alright, so what we need to do is, in order to make sure that our lecture goes very smooth, we need to change the position of that particular student, bring into first bench and things like that, alright, so that means what, we are changing the position, same thing is for F block also, F block elements are a part of D block elements, but because their characters, because their properties are different and therefore we give different position and that is going to be at the bottom of the periodic table. Absolutely aloof. So they are not going to interact with anyone. Okay. Jo aisa masti karne wala usko ek aisi jaga pe rakhte ke jaha par ho bilkul masti nahi karega. Alag jaga par. Shant ho jayega. So same thing is over here also. So this is F. Okay. So we have S, D, P and then we got F. Alright. Now, next thing is, you know the capacities of all these orbitals, maximum capacity. Okay, S, 2, P is 6 and D is 10. So whatever is the maximum capacity of the orbital, that many groups are being assigned to that particular block. Yani S ka maximum capacity is 2, so therefore group number is 1 and 2. Uske D aata hai, D ka capacity is 10, so 10 groups are assigned to this and therefore it goes from 3 to 12. For P, the maximum capacity is 6, so 6 groups are assigned, so that is 13 to 18. Okay, I won't give 14 over here, I've already given you the reason why it is so, yes. Okay, that is, they are not different, they are a part of D, but only the characteristics are different, so therefore we are giving different positions. And therefore if you add all these, 
you come to know that there are 18 groups in the periodic table which you have been learning now from a long time ever since you started learning chemistry all right so this is the way we get this 18 number it's no a magical number this is the technical reason why we have 18 groups in the periodic table all right so this is the introduction part about what exactly the periodic table is all about now as i said about the properties the position of the elements are related to the properties all right s block all the s block elements are metals and the p block as i said it's a mixture of metals non metals metalloids okay the top ones okay are going to be non metals the middle one is metalloid and the bottom one are metals okay that is what is the arrangement of the p block elements are all right so now what happens is overall we consider is non metallic because even if they have they are metals like lead and tin and all that but their metallic characters as compared to s block is less all right so that's why we overall we consider general impression is we consider it as non metallic this is metallic okay now there is a change over because metallic and non metallic properties are opposite ye aapko bhi pata hai to ye change over hone wala hai jab hum s se p ki taraf jayenge from a metallic character to a non metallic character लेकिन देखो दोस्तों ये चेंज ओवर कैसे हो रहा है बिकॉज दिस चेंज ओवर इज टेकिंग प्लेस थ्रू वॉट दिस डी ओके इट इज टेकिंग प्लेस थ्रू दिस डी एंड डी हैज गॉट टेन ग्रुप्स सो व्हाट वी से नाउ अबाउट दिस चेंज इज इट्स अ ग्रेजुअल चेंज के सडन चेंज ओ यस आई कैन यूर इट यू आर सेइंग इट्स अ ग्रेजुअल चेंज इफ एस एन पी आई फाइव शोड लाइक दिस दिस इज एस एन दिस इज पी देन आई वुड है इट्स अ सडन चेंज बट यहां पे डी है ओके सो दिस डी इज रेप्रेजेंटिंग दैट यस इट्स अ ग्रेजुअल चेंज ओके दिस ग्रेजुअल चेंज ओवर ओके बिटवीन द टू ऑपोजिट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट ट्रांजिशन ना तो सुना होगा ओके इट इज कॉल्ड एज वॉट ट्रांजिशन सो दिस ट्रांजिशन इज अथिंग बट इट शोज अ चेंज ओवर फेस Okay, and that is what are being shown by the D block elements. Okay, change over from a metallic character to a non-metallic character, and this change over phase is what? Yes, it's gradual. It's not a sudden one. Okay, and that is what is called as what transition. And hence, D block elements they are called as transition elements. So as a result of which in a lecture also you have to be completely focused on what the teacher is teaching. Okay, and your entire attention has to be centralized. Same thing is over here in this particular chapter also. Our entire focus is on this center. Okay, that is d orbitals. Okay, in this entire chapter we are going to consider those. Okay, d orbitals, the d block elements. Okay, and because they are going to, as I say, uh, significance of. a gradual change over from a metallic character to a non metallic character all right and those are d block elements so i hope you have understood up to this far transition ka matlab kya hota hai it's a gradual change over phase okay so yahan par jo change over ho raha hai wo kaun sa change over ho raha hai from a metallic character that is nothing but s block to a non metallic character okay and that is p block so this change over is taking place through the d block elements and therefore these d block elements are being called as what transition elements now all these d block elements all these are metals okay are what metals once again i repeat all d block elements are metals and when i say d block elements as transition elements and because they are all metals so i call it as what transition metals Okay, there are many of them. So run from group three to group twelve. So there are many transition metals, and we do a systematic comparison of the properties of those transition metals. Okay, from group number three to twelve, what is happening? As I said, we are going to completely focus on the center. Okay, so what is the change over taking place of the properties as we go from group three to group twelve? That is, as we go through the first tra transition metal to the last group transition metal. Okay, and this is called as comparison. 
and hence the title of the chapter is Comparative Chemistry of Transition Metals. Please be very careful. The comparison is taking place only within the transition metals. I specified it's group 3 to group 12. I'm not comparing this D block with the S block. Neither I'm comparing it with P block or F block. Okay, be very clear. I'm making a comparison very clearly amongst the transition metals itself. Alright, so this is what the title is. We are making a comparison of the properties of the transition metals. What do you mean by transition metals? You understood this very well. It's a changeover, okay, a gradual changeover taking place between the two extremes. Here the extremes are the metallic to the non-metallic, okay, that is S block to P block. Alright, so with respect to the positions, I guess you are being very clear that these D block elements are going to be situated in between the S and the P block elements and hence we use this word called as transition elements. I hope you have understood up to this very well. I have explained you the transition element concept with respect to the position in the periodic table. Now we go into the technical aspect of this by taking into consideration the electronic configuration. So what is that? Transition metals are nothing but all those metals which either in the atomic state or the oxidation state have incompletely filled d orbitals okay having completely filled what d orbitals now i'll try to explain you some terms which are involved in this all right and that marks the end of the introduction of this particular chapter and that is first thing is atomic state very simple it's a state of an atom and you know very well that atom is what? Neutral. So a state where an element is having same number of protons as well as electrons. That is being an atomic state. So whenever I consider an atomic number and write down the electronic configuration on the basis of that atomic number, then I say that that element is in the atomic state. It is in the neutral state. So atomic state means it is neutral. Oxidation state, opposite of that. Opposite of neutral is what? Oh yes, it's charge. Okay, opposite of this is charge. Now, when I talk about charge, it is made up of two parts. The first part is, it contains a sign. And it contains a magnitude. Okay, now when I talk about sign, it can be either positive or it can be negative. But as I told you before, that transition elements, all of which are going to show a metallic character. And you know very well, all metals have a tendency to lose electrons, right? And when the loss of electrons takes place, electrons are negative. You give away the negativity from your character, see your character becomes positive. The same thing is over here as well. Okay, so the positive charge is developed, so positive sign always for all the transition elements. Now magnitude will tell us about the number of electrons lost. Okay, so that varies okay, from element to element. The reason is very simple because whenever a particular species has a charge, it is only possible when it is going to combine with some other element. So the number of electrons lost or the number of electrons gained depends upon the nature of the element with which it is combining. It also depends upon the reaction conditions. Many times you have seen that the reactants are same but the products are different. Because the reaction conditions are different. When I talk about reaction condition, I talk about the proportion of the reaction. I talk about the temperature, I talk about pressure, I talk about catalyst, presence, absence. So all these are the various conditions. And depending upon which, the products are formed. And if the products are different, the charge also varies of that particular element. So that is about magnitude. Okay, the number of electrons which are lost. Okay, that all depends upon the reaction conditions and it all depends upon the nature of the element with which this transition metals are combining. Am I clear? But this is always fixed. It's always positive. You won't have any transition metal showing a negative charge. Okay, it's not there. So that is what you need to consider over here. So this is about oxidation state, charge made up of two parts, sign as well as magnitude. Because they're going to lose electron, they will always show a positive sign. And magnitude will depend upon the number of electrons lost. That fantastic. Now we go into this. Incompletely filled d orbitals. What do you mean by this? Incompletely filled d orbitals. What is the maximum capacity of the d orbital is 10? Anything less than the maximum capacity is called as incompletely filled. So now I will consider some cases. 
The first case I consider is D0. Can I call it as uh, incompletely filled? No. It doesn't sound good, right? Okay, because no electron is there in the D orbit. In a classroom also, suppose, if there is not a single student in the classroom. Am I going to say that classroom is incompletely filled? No. Because for incompletely filled, there has to be at least one student. For same thing is over here also. For the d orbital to be called as incompletely filled, there has to be at least one electron in that d orbital. This is zero. I won't call it as incompletely filled. I will use the word vacant. Okay. So this is called as a vacant orbital. So I am not going to consider this because my definition says very clearly it is incompletely filled at d orbitals. So this is out. Can I call it as d10? No ways, because the maximum capacity of the d orbital is 10. Okay, so it is completely filled. Common sense eh? if this will be called as what? Completely filled. So yeah, bhi nahi Cancel. So what remains? Whatever is going to remain, that range, that will be there. And that is d1 say d9. Alright? It is d1 to d9. This is the range where we talk about incompletely filled d orbital okay so now i guess all the terms are very clear so we wrap up now and that is the technical definition of transition elements is nothing but it is an element which either in the atomic state that means in the neutral state or oxidation state okay that is the charge state have incompletely filled d orbital that means they will be having a configuration from d1 to d9 okay d0 vacant cancel D10 completely filled, cancel. So either in the atomic state or in the oxidation, it can be any one of those. So please be very clear. It's either, all right? It's not both. So either by without losing any electrons or after losing electrons, if they achieve the electronic configuration somewhere in this particular range, then I will call it as what? Transition elements or I will call it as transition metals. All right? So this is the... the Scientific definition of transition metals, where in the atomic state or the oxidation state, they have incompletely filled d orbitals. That means I'm being much more precise, having an electronic configuration in the range of d1 to d9. All right. I hope you have understood this very well.